How do you beat your friends at poker? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through some tips and tricks coming up. How are you doing today? Welcome back to my live poker series. My name is Andreas and in this video series, I teach people how to get better at live poker. And in today's episode, I'm gonna talk about how you can beat your friends at poker. The first thing you want to consider if you're playing with friends is what the wager is. I really recommend at least playing for $5 a person because if you're not having any wager whatsoever, what's the point of playing poker? The next thing you want to figure out is whether you want to play a cash game or a tournament. If you want to beat your friends at poker, I suggest you play a cash game. In a tournament, typically a poker night might go like for three, four hours. And because the blinds, the wager would increase uh, very drastically at some point, uh, usually the luckiest person wins and it's not really about skill that much. So if you care about skill and you know you want the better person to win, you rather play some five cent tens in cash game or some sorts of that. And then you know, you're know you gonna have a better chance if you're better than your friends at poker. In terms of which hands you wanna play, you wanna stick to a pocket pair that's sixes or higher because those hands, you know, they stay the best hand very often or hands that are connected and suited medium and above, for example, eight, nine from the same color and above, or then also high cards such as, you know, a king and a queen or an ace and a jack and better, also preferably suited, but you would also play the offsuit one. By having this hand selection, it will consistently dominate your opponent's hand by having a better hand after the flop, the community cards gets dealt. For example, a hand like 3-7 suited only has a straight on the first three community cards when the flop comes 4-5-6 and it also makes a smaller flush, you know, finding those three other suits on the board. And when someone of your opponents has a better hand in the exact same suit, they're gonna usually win a pretty large pot. So having high cards that are suited definitely trumps the lower cards that are suited and it's gonna make you win a lot of pots in those home games. The next tip I have for you if you wanna beat your friends at poker is to bet a reasonable amount. Let's say you're playing a cash game and the pot ends up being a dollar. So betting a reasonable amount is for example something like 50 cents or half what's in the pot size in the middle already. That has two effects. For once, if you have a good hand, you're actually getting some value out of your hands if your opponent wants to see what you got. And also on the other hand, you're, it's not too cheap for your opponent to see whether you're bluffing. Let's now talk about the most important quality that you need to win at your local home game. And that is knowing the player types. Let's start with the first player type, which is gonna be the conservative player. The conservative player usually doesn't bluff very often. And when he bets multiple streets in a row, so for example, when the first three cards show up and then on the fourth and the fifth card, then it usually means that they have a good hand. They don't want to get ca uh, caught bluffing and they basically just don't want to risk so much winning a poker hand. So when they risk a lot, they usually got it. The next player type is going to be the loose passive player. With this player, it's usually you who you have to do the betting because that player usually checks, waits for a bet of you and then calls the bet or just matches the bet. So unless you do some betting, the pot's usually not gonna get bigger. And when that player starts betting uh, himself or herself, then you know it usually means also that player's a hand. The third player type that I have here for you is gonna be the maniac. The maniac loves the action, just wants to play as many hands as possible in a uh, as crazy way as uh, possible. You never know what the maniac has. He can have anything from like a seven deuce offset to pocket aces. And you actually don't know what the person does. Usually against the maniac, it's very advisable to wait for a good hand to look that person up because the chances are still very high that the maniac is bluffing and therefore you're gonna win the pot. The fourth player type is gonna be what we call a calling station. You know, it's gonna be somewhat similar as the loose passive player, but you know, in comparison, the calling station will just always call down until the last card, no matter what he's got. So if the calling station has ace high or king high, you know, what usually will happen that even if you're betting three times, that player will often try to hero call or be a hero and try to look you up with a very weak holding. So do not try to bluff this opponent because that opponent ain't folding. 
The last player type that I want to talk about is the player with too much ego. This player seeks revenge and is going after you if you bluff that player too often or if you, you know, win a pot against that player in general. So that player, it's really about the dynamics of the game and you have to pick up on that. And it really happens in any poker game, in very friendly home games and also in some sort of high stakes games. People with too much ego will reveal themselves and they, they will go after you after something or after they lose a big pot against you. I hope with these tips and tricks, you are ready to crush your friends at poker the next time you're playing. Let me know in the comment section below if you're starting out and if this video is helpful to you. From now on, uh, the videos about live poker will be a bit more advanced and less for beginners, but I hope that you stay with me and I see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.